How do you work with padding? In this video, we're going to learn about padding in Swift UI so that you can understand the order of modifiers and how you can leverage padding to create different layout effects. Let's take a look. All right, so we're going to just replace this. Um, actually, now we'll, we'll work with this. So we've got a V stack here and it's got padding on it. And I want to show you what that's going to look like. So depending on the order, we can add a background of, uh, let's just go with that green, throw that on here and let's make this fun. Let's make it a gradient. So it looks a little bit more interesting. So there we've got some padding and I'm going to move the lines around with a keyboard shortcut and let's see, I don't have keyboard on. So let's turn that on so you can see what I'm doing here. All right. So if I select this line with this, you're going to see the keyboard shortcuts in the bottom left corner, the command um, option, and then square brackets allow you to move lines up and down. So let's try moving where the background is applied. If I move it up, you'll see that it's covering just the text. If I move it up here, it's just going to be around the globe. And then if we move it around the V stack, it's going to be surrounding the whole V stack so that we can interact with it. And so that's one of the cool things with the way that Swift UI works is order really makes a difference and it helps you start to think about, okay, where do I structure things? How can I get the relationships that I want? Um, so that's an example of padding. And as we add more elements, so let's add another text, more text here, we'll see that we can again use padding and we can do a fun blue with a gradient and that's cool. Okay. So where I might want to do something interesting here is I might want to add padding in only the horizontal directions. And so here we can see that it only adds it to the horizontal and I can customize that. Let's say we want 40 padding on either side. If I save that, you'll see that we have that as well. Let's make the text a little bit bigger. So let's pick a font and let's do the title fonts um, just so that it's a little bit easier to see. And we can see how that just gives us more um, padding on either side. And again, if I were to move the padding up or down, it's going to potentially change how it applies. If I move it below the color, so gradient, this background applies to what it can see. Um, but it's not applying to this. And so let's add another one here. And this one, I'm going to go with yellow. And you'll see that we've got a background that matches the text size, um, but it is not um, applying it to everything. So that's kind of how padding works. And if we need to, we can also add vertical padding. And doing that, uh, you're going to see that we get both um, both of these paddings are going to be yellow because the blue is the interior. Now, if I were to bring blue down, you'd see that blue now takes up the full space and it's doing yellow. But since blue is on top, that's going to be the first color that we see here. Okay. So that's a little bit about working with padding. Now, another thing is sometimes we want content to expand outwards. And the way we do that is with the frame modifier. So if I do text and I do expand to the edges, and then we do the frame, and then we do width, and I want actually max width, and we're going to do dot infinity. So this is going to allow us to expand out to the edges, um, but we're not going to see anything. So let's throw on a background. And the default backgrounds, uh, we need to give it a color. So let's do orange. Okay, so that expands the edges. Now, this is where sometimes you want to do padding. So now if I add padding and I say I want a 40 point inset, what that's going to do is it's going to create this space on either side. And that's right above me. I don't know if I need to bring up the debug dialog so that we get a little bit more space. Um, you're going to see that that is going to add that, that padding there. Okay. Um, 
The other thing that you're going to want to do is a lot of times you're going to have multiple pieces of content. So let's actually ask ChatGPT, create a simple form that has a title, a description, some kind of icon, image, and uh, put them in a VStack. So I could type all this out, but let's see if this is any faster. This is probably going to be way slower. Um, so we've got we've got these different paddings and and that's like that's like the gist of it. And we can use this to create more complex scenarios. And so let's see what ChatGPT. Oh, it's just going to trash everything. Okay. Thanks ChatGPT. Um Yeah. Uh Let me just grab some text. Let's grab some text. Is that going to like me? Okay, so this is looking a little bit better. Um, and let's put this in a, we need a background. And let's go with blue.gradients. Uh, let's make this primary. Let's make this white. And then, so here we're getting closer to a real world scenario. This probably needs to be white as well. Um, foreground style white. And sure, the icon is okay, but this probably needs to be yellow. And that's looking a little bit better. So let's then round our corners real quick. Um, to do that corner radius and let's go with 12 and pretty cool. And so this is where we need padding. Um, so in this situation, uh, I want interior padding on all of this. And so let's take a look at what this will look like. We'll add a background for debugging. This is going to be a, let's go with orange background. Um, and Sometimes these are multiple lines. Learn anything you want to learn today. Okay. So we've got that. Um, and this is how everything's sort of shaping up. And so when we're working with a UI like this, we just have to be a little bit, um, we need to do multiple multiple elements inset. And so if I was doing a UI like this, I'm going to add padding, not just here. So this is adding it to the outside. So this is our outside padding. And a lot of times I just want that to be horizontal because I've, I'm sort of laying out stuff. So I'll probably do horizontal and let's go 40. Um, that's going to inset a little bit. That might be too much depending on the, the iPhone that you're on. And then the other thing we need is content inside. So we've got a V stack here and I need to do an inset on all of these before the background. So if I get rid of the background, you're going to see, we can't see the text anymore. Um, so to fix that, we want a padding here and this is going to be horizontal and this might actually be on all sides. So I could do all, or I could just omit all. And on this, we'll do 20 as well, just to have it inset a little bit more. And so what that's going to do is that's going to make our multi-line text um, inset a little bit more. You're going to see that it is, it is inset more, mainly because the, the words and the way that they wrap are, are going to be inset like that. Um, I don't know if our title, we went with title two, that might impact it a little bit more. Do we have any other paddings? No. Well, actually, um, am I applying padding incorrectly here? No, I think it's the word wrapping. Um, 
So if we comment this out, uh, you'll see that the text is all in set. Um, if we, let's, let's just double check our bases. If we comment out the font, it looks like it's still applying, or it's just the way the words wrap. Let's do a leading on the title because it just looks weird to me. So let's do font um, alignment. Okay, I mean, that's looking better to me. Uh, without that, it just kind of looks a little bit weird have it inset. So let's just double check. Okay, looking way better. And then if we add the background, we can sort of see how that's going to wrap. I think that's the, the right choice um, for this UI. This is just something I came up with on the fly. Um, so just playing around with it, just to sort of show an example of how your app UI can be affected and how the, the layout changes depending on what you have. So that's an example of a little widget that you could build in Swift UI and playing with the padding. Just remember where you put the padding is going to make a difference into where this goes. So if I move this padding here, um, it's applying padding on all sides, but now it's white padding. And so we are getting rounded corners, but we don't see it because they are obscured. So order really matters when we're doing this stuff corner radius will be applying to different things. And um, you can just quickly move up and down lines of code just to sort of see, well, what happens if I move this line of code up or down? So if I move padding above the corner radius, again, we've got a white border, which is our default for this, this mode on top of white. So we don't see the corner radius anymore. Um, and now we see the corner radius again. So I hope that's helpful. Like this video if you learned something new and subscribe if you want to get more Swift UI tips and tutorials and learn how to work with ChatGPT or AI to help you as you make your own apps. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.